Uh, my preaching title is, Does the Bible Show Us What Comes After COVID-19? That's a big question people ask me all the time. Do you know what comes after Corona? Uh, will be the life the same? And to give you a very cool uh, bi biblical answer, you have to understand when God speaks a prophetic word, God repeats every word always twice, always twice, always double. If God speaks to you, God repeats us all the time, at least two times. And it starts like in the beginning of the covenant of Noah, that means the beginning of the Bible, if you don't have a smartphone Bible. And then in the end of the Bible, it's the book of Revelation, God is repeating the same thing in the beginning and also in the end. And I wanna start about the beginning and the end in Matthew chapter 24, verse 83 to 42. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing, they knew nothing about what will happen until the flood came and took them all away. Can you imagine how shocked they have been? This is how it will be in the coming, in the book of Revelation, when the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, will come again. And now Jesus speaks to the church, to the Christians. Therefore, Christians, therefore, the body of Christ, I say, for whatever church you go, keep watch, because do you don't know what day your Lord will come back. Before the word Jesus is saying, be ready, be ready all the time, be sure that, that, that Jesus Christ is the center, he sits on the throne in every single detail in your life. You know, in the, the coronavirus actually came out of the blue, right? Since more a year, I know people say, I, I don't like the word anymore, I'm so tired, I wanna be back to the normal. What actually God did to the virus, is I don't say the virus is from God, but God could, could say one word and the virus is for, for, uh, stopped forever, right? Well, what God is doing actually at the moment, he shakes the whole entire world, he shakes your own personal life, and when God is doing the shaking thing, it gives a reaction. And in the corona season of this more than a year, what God did to the Holy Spirit, he burned so many things away in our lives. Some people, they lost their company. Some people, they lost their family. Some people lost their job. Some people, they're not able to travel anymore. And we are here saying, oh my gosh, I wanna go back to the normal. And this is always a season God burns things away. It's like an awakening call to the body of Christ, to the local church, to you and me. Is Christ really the center of your life? It does, there's a man, he's a very famous man right now, his name is Scott. He lives in Alabama. And one day he comes home, his whole house was burning, burning down to the ground, can you imagine? And the firemen came and uh, they stopped the fire. And what they found, the only remaining piece in the house was the family Bible. And when they found the family Bible, it was not burned at all. They took it out and he shooted some mails and, and, and to whole Insta stories. And a lot of people get very encouraged because when things are burning away, if God takes things away from us, my question is always, what remains? Remains the word of God? Is the word of God my foundation or are my feelings my foundation? Because right now in our generation, we say, if I feel, then it's right. I say, I don't believe in feelings. I believe in the biggest source. The word of God is my foundation. It's my feeling. And I wanna start, uh, what comes after Corona? In Revelation chapter one, verse three, a pretty cool Bible verse actually. Blessed, check this out. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the, of the words of this prophecy. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy right now. This is, this is very cool. The one who reads the book of Revelation can be happy. I'm happy. Check this out. And those who hear it, like you guys on online and podcast, and take the heart has written in because its time is near. If, if you hear the book of Revelation, there's one message. Get ready. Be on fire. Share the gospel. Spread the gospel. Do good things in a lost world. I wanna give you an overview about the book of Revelation and then he's going into what does the Bible says about what comes after COVID-19. 
The book of Revelation are four parts. The first, the seven churches. Then the seven seals is like an introduction of, is, is only the introduction, but the seven trumpets is crazy, and then the seven catastrophes. With other four different parts. And a lot of people, they say to me, Pastor Leo, I don't get it. When I read the book of Revelation, I, I get very afraid. Because when you read it, it's a lot of killing, blood, destroying, and all those things. They say, my God, Leo, how can God be a good God? Now, please listen to me. We have to understand how God works, how God operates. Because when the people of God have been in Egypt for many, many years as a slaves, God let them out of Egypt. But before that happened, the, the Pharaoh and the Egypt people say, we don't let you go. And God said, if you don't let you go, I want to demonstrate you my power. I want to demonstrate you that God is still on the throne. Because the Egypt people, they believed they are the strongest nation, the richest nation, the smartest nation. And for every area, they had a God. Ten different gods for ten different areas. And God is saying, if you don't let my people go, I will demonstrate with signs and miracles that I am still on the throne. If you don't believe in God, you will say, oh my gosh, killing, blah, 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 blah. If you believe in God, say, no, 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 no. God confronted all the gods of Egypt and saying, I am stronger. Can you imagine? For every 10 gods, God demonstrated that he's on the throne. And each people, they realize, oh, our gods are not as strong as the God Yahweh, the Almighty, the Elohim God. And for the Jewish people, they say, oh my gosh, we belong to this winning team. And when you read the book of Revelation, don't worry, be happy. You belong to the winning team. If you don't belong to the winning team, oh my gosh. That's another story. Now, what God does before God punish people, it's the same thing. I have two boys in my home. My wife and I, we made two boys. Good Swiss family has two boys. No, boy and girl, of course. Um, yeah, when, when my kids are not doing good, what, what never happened actually, but then you do a coaching moment, right? You say, sons and daughters, come on the table. I want to I teach you something very important. And one, one son, he's listening, goes out, he acts according to my teaching, right? The other son, he listens, goes out, and he does the opposite. Before God brings judge, please understand the characteristics of God. God always has a coaching moment with you. Like a mom to a daughter, to the son, the dad, to son and don't. You have a coaching moment. And God takes the seven churches on the table. And he's saying, you are my churches. You share and preach the word of God. But there are some things in your life I don't get it. I don't like. And here is what God is doing. He teaches the seven churches specific about certain issues and say, please change. And let's go into the story of the seven churches about the message of Jesus Christ to them. Revelation talks about seven churches that existed to the time of John, the phenomenal author of this book. In fact, Revelation is a letter to these different churches. And furthermore, these churches represent different life situations of Christians throughout all times and generations. John does not exactly treat the church in Ephesus gently. He accuses the believers of being low fire for Jesus instead of on fire. And at the same time, challenges them to find their way back to their passion for Jesus. The Jesus people in the church of Smyrna are persecuted and suffer from poverty. The writer encourages them to be faithful to God, even unto death. And he shows them how rich they actually are because Jesus is waiting for them at the finish line with the victory trophy. Yes. The church in Pergamum is very modern and tolerates just about everything under the sun. Everyone with everyone, the main thing is that it feels good to me. John writes very clearly, guys, it's time for a U-turn. The guys and gals of Theotara follow a prophetess who loudly proclaims free love. John challenges the congregation to shoot her into the universe as soon as possible. The church in Sardis is dozing away. People, wake up! 
John challenges them to get off their butts and to gain momentum regarding the way they live out their faith. The crew in Philadelphia earns praise for their fearless stand in the cause of Christ. John calls out to them, Jesus is coming soon. Finally, there is a message for the believers in Laodicea who have become comfortable. Despite their wealth, they are called poor and urged to change course immediately. The time has come. Come on, let's all give our production team a big round of applause. Hey, you understand, what God is doing in the book of Revelation gives like a coaching moment. This is the first thing what God is doing all the time. I don't know what house about you, but the last year, the Holy Spirit spoke to me because you are now the temple of the living God, right? The Holy Spirit lives in you. That means the Spirit of God speaks to you about a certain topic or gives you encouragement. Because believers of Christ, we are, have big ears and we are able to listen to the beautiful voice of the Holy Spirit, right? That means we are in a relationship with God Almighty. It's like a coaching moment. God will never punish a world. God will never bring a pledge to the world before he's not having this coaching moment. Check this out. God is speaking with seven churches, but not all of them are repenting. And in the chapter number four, it's a chapter about the throne and Jesus saying, I am on the throne and I will always be on the throne. I'm almighty, all known, all presence. I am on the throne. And after chapter number four, God is saying, if the coaching moment doesn't work, how can you have you back? That means I want to show, present you my power with signs and miracles around the world. Let's dive into Revelation chapter 6, and I want to share with you maybe one idea how it could be. I don't say, listen, listen to me, I don't say this is how it is or how it will be. I just share with you guys what could be. The book of Revelation starts with four different horses. If you love animals, if you love specific horses, you'll say, oh, that's my chapter. It's a black horse, a white horse, a red horse, and a very special horse, actually. This is a picture. Check this out. You can see a lot of elements in the hands of those four riders. And the Revelation chapter 6 speaks about the four horses. And what, what has this to do with you and me? I want to start with the first Revelation chapter 6, verse 1 and 2. I watch as the Lamb, this is Jesus, has opened the first of the seven seals. I looked and there before me was a white horse. It's a rider held a bow and he was given a crown. He was given a crown and he rode out as a conquered bent and conquest. The crown actually, dear people, what I believe, as you can see in the next picture, the white horse stands for winning, means for me crown stands for me for corona. And you say, oh my gosh, crown, corona. Just think for a moment. Who gave this virus a name? Someone in the world has given that virus a name. You could name this virus Dave or Leo. But why Corona? Have you ever thought about it? This writer was given a crown. He was conquering the whole entire earth. It could be, dear friends, that the virus Corona is, has a whole effect around the globe. It's not the first time that the virus stopped the world, but for the very first time that the whole entire world is stopped to a virus. And that horse is coming against you, if you like horses or not, that could be the first horse. What comes after Corona? That's my preaching title. It's the second horse. And the second horse is in Revelation 6 verse 4. And then another horse came out, a fiery red one like, like Ferrari. Its rider was given the power to take the peace from the earth and to make people kill each other. To him was given a large sword. And the second horse, as you can see, it's red. Red stands for blood. It's the dispute and also the dead. After Corona comes dead and fights. Also, let's be honest. Corona split the world in two groups. Pro-Corona and against Corona, right? Two groups. The whole entire church is two groups. There's nothing like in the middle anymore. Either or. 
And I've never seen so many fights and riots around the world like right now, or right now because people getting so mad, so dis discouraged, and so many depression around the world. And you're not, you're not even a to able to speak with people about Corona. If you have another meaning with social media or WhatsApp or whatever, they will, they will delete you. That means there's only one option and one meaning and one impression. And I think right now the whole entire world is in a season where God takes away the joy, the love for each other. And I've never seen a season around the globe where people hate each other so crazy. Before you could say, oh, some people, they have a problem with Russia or Putin or whatever. Now it's a virus. A virus is not even a person. We fight about a virus. We don't fight about a system. We don't fight about a nation. We fight about a virus. This happens around the world. Can you imagine? Three weeks ago in the Netherlands, a lot of young people went out to the streets and said, we don't like to stay at home anymore because the government is so restricted and so crazy, like a dictator, and they start to, to kill each other and doing a lot of stuff. And the news right for the very first time that the war is around the corner in Europe. I mean, I'm no more than 50 years old. I've never heard that war is closer in Europe than ever, only because of a virus. The third horse is uh, another one. Uh, it says, I looked and there before was a black horse. It's a rider was holding a pair of scale in his hand. Two pounds of wheat for a day's wage and six pounds of perel for a day's wage. And do not damage the oil and wine. So don't damage wine and oil. Corona, killing, and the black means gloomy scale, financial crisis, a famine in, in the land. What comes off the corona, I tell you something, and I'm very good in numbers. No nation can invest millions and billions of US dollars in a system and all the nations around the world, we are bankrupt, we have no money anymore. How does it work? We print and print and print money and money, and it's no question, it's only a, a, a question of a time where we're running out of money. France, Italy, uh, Greek, whatever, they don't have money anymore, and it means in the end of the day, a famine will hit the land because of a virus. And if you speak with bankers, people that have money, they know what I'm talking about. That's why a lot of people do buy either gold or you buying a land because money has no, no power in some month or the years uh, anymore. That means from corona to fights to a catastrophe in terms of economy, that means we were running out of money. Now I wanna ask you a question. Can you ask you a question? A lot of Swiss people, they say, Money, it's not the issue. It's better save people's life than money. We're one of the richest lands of this earth. Money is no problem. We can invest millions and billions of US dollars right now, lockdown and slow down and all. It's only money. It's only money. Have you ever heard it's only money? It's only money. Life, it's more important. I wanna ask you a question. Why money has no meaning? Why in the world haven't we helped people a year ago before the coronavirus, people they're dying of food, of waters. We let those people die, and I'll ask you, it's only money. Has every nation put in millions and billions of helping poor people? No. We're helping, protecting our lives. Switzerland, 9,000 people died. And my mom, my mom too, she's in the 9,000 because she's 86 years young, not old. With 86, you're young. Old when you are 200 years old. 9,000 people. Do you know how many people will die because of the lockdowns, slowdowns we have did around the world? There's a statistic that's saying 150 million people will die because of our lockdowns. When you speak about who dies, 9,000 or 150 millions, that means the rich people right now, they get richer and the poor people get poorer. And we think, oh, we did everything right. Really? I'm not really so sure because we never take care for the people in need. And Jesus said, I was hungry. 
I was thirsty. I asked you for food, for water. We said two years ago, I don't care, it's too expensive. But now with the coronavirus, we saved my grandma, my granddad, all those people, 9,000 people, but the rest, we let millions of people die, but we are safe. And I just wanna say to you, I don't say I'm right or wrong, I just wanna ask you a question, and nobody has the guts to ask those questions anymore because if you raise this question, they will say you're against. I'm not against, but I'm just a thinker. I have just some questions. The fourth horse, it's, I looked on there before was a peel horse. Its rider was named the dead, and, and Hades was falling close behind him. They were giving the power of a fourth of this earth to kill by a sword, a famine, a pledge, and by wild beasts of earth, wild animals, wild elements. The fourth horse, as you can see, it's dead, pledges, and a downfall. Corona falls with some fights, financial crisis, and then comes God again, and he proves his power and demonstration that God is bigger than ever before. Hey, God first took the seven churches for a coaching. Some were listening and some were not listening. And God is saying, if you don't listen, I wanna win your heart back and I do everything to establish the throne in your life. It's actually a love message to God Almighty, to you and me. When these four horses happened, comes the fifth seal. And I wanna read the fifth seal because this is pretty amazing what God is saying in the next Bible verse. Then he opened the fifth seal. I saw under the altar the soul of those who had been slain because of the word of God and the testimony of the have maintained. Did you know that 80% of all the believers, of all the Christians around the world, they're suffering because of their faith in China, in, 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 in Iraq, Syria, whatever. You cannot say, I believe in Jesus Christ, I'm going to a very cool church, they will kill you. 80% of all the followers around the world, they're suffering, they are killed because of their faith. Then each of them was given a white robe. That's cool, not a white robe from Gucci, Prada, it's a white robe from God. And they were told to wait a little bit longer. They said, don't worry, just wait until the full members of the followers, servants, their brothers and sisters, you and me, were killed just as they had been. That's the moment you say, oh my gosh, Pastor Leo. Happy is the one who reads the prophetic word. And happy are those that read those things. And you say, I'm so young, I wanna get married, I wanna have children, child and a Ferrari and a BMW, whatever. Hey, that's not the point. The most important thing is the white dress. After the fifth seal comes, uh, comes the, the sixth, the fifth and the sixth on the screen, as you can say, the matters are confronted and the seal number six is signs on earth and heavens. Why is God doing that? In the sixth seal, listen to me, God is picking 144,000 people from the Jews. 144,000 people from the Jewish tribe will be reconnected with God and God will use them and they will spread the word around the world. God is anointing them, appointing those people to share the word with an amazing anointing like Billy Graham, like Rainer Bonnke, Mother Teresa, Christine Kane, or Joyce Meyer, with such anointing, but not four, five, 10 people. 144,000 people will have been anointed and they're going out in a season when the whole world is shaking and they will preach the good news about Jesus Christ. When darkness is getting bigger, the light of God is even stronger. Nothing can stop the word of God. Now listen to me, and you're very quiet right now, I understand, I was shocked also in the beginning, but check this out. All those pledge, what is the point? That leads me to the uh, Revelation chapter seven, verse nine. After this, I looked and therefore was a great multitude that no one could count. From every nation, 
from every tribe, people and language standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes. You see, the white robe is the most important thing. And they're holding palm branches in their hand. If you are God, you ask the seven church for a coaching, and some were listening, and some they were disobedient. God is saying, my last option is I demonstrate in the seen world that I am the living God, the strongest God above all the gods. All those signs and miracles is God is doing to shake you and me. Say, get ready, be on fire, be right. You never know when Jesus Christ is coming back. But the seventh seal, the seven seals, heaven is silent. When Jesus, God created heaven on the earth, on the seventh day, in the Sabbath, he did nothing. The introduction of the book of Revelation, God is saying, I have a coaching moment with all the churches. If this is, doesn't work, let's shake the world a little bit. And if you, because of the seven seals of rain, this is just the introduction. That's not even the real stuff who is coming in the book of Revelation. And what is the ending of the message, Pastor Leo? Good question. I study theology. I have a title in theology. And I know all the different options of the book of Revelation. I don't, I don't say this is how it will be. This could be just one option, right? But the book of Revelation has two messages. Get ready. Be on fire. Make Christ as the Lord and Savior in every area of your life. In your sexuality, in your finances, in your family. Let be Him the King. And if He is the King, whatever happens, whatever takes place, our job as the body of Christ is let's go out and preach the word of God to the lost people. Everyone has some people in your neighborhood, maybe in your own family, in your own tribe, they don't know, they don't believe in Christ right now. And our job is not speaking for Corona, against Corona, for the mask, for vaccine. I don't care, that's not our job. Our job is to share the gospel, the good news. And Jesus is appointing 144,000 Jewish people to spread the word around the world. And I think our job as a body of Christ is an awakening call. And I'm not so disappointed about Corona. This is the finest hour for the body of Christ if we understand the lesson of God. Why in the world God is allowing this virus to stop everything? There's a message. One day comes a virus that no vaccine and no lockdown can stop. This is just the beginning. Why God is doing that? Because we people, we think we don't need God. I have a house, a good job. I can dance, I can sing, I can move. Why should I need God? If I feel love, I do love. And God is shaking and saying, do you really are stronger than the God Almighty? And God right now is shaking the whole entire world as a demonstration that He is still the one on the throne. In closing, what, what can we do with the message? I want to share with you a little bit what we're doing the next couple of weeks in ICF. We're going to into a hashtag Jesus series the next 40 days. And what we want to do before Eastern, we start from tomorrow on until Saturday, a prayer week. We will pray every single evening for salvation. We cannot bring a person to Christ, only the Holy Spirit can open their eyes. We want to pray that revival takes place in our neighborhood, in my family, in our nations, every single evening. If you're not able to speak German, that's a good moment to learn German. Just tune in in Instagram on, on, on YouTube and we will pray for one week. And after the week, we will pray for 40 days, 24-7, every single day. Every hour, we pray for 40 days as a whole entire church. God, revive us. God, change our nation. Change my family. We need you. We are doing something because the whole world needs Jesus Christ. 
Then comes the Easter weekend. We invite people for the musical, for the Good Friday, for the international service. We invite all our lost friends online, in person, whatever. And after that, after the Easter musical, when a lot of people got saved, we will do like a um, Knowing God course. And for two weeks, we want to ask everyone, if you want to know Christ, join this course. And for the next two Sundays, we will do the musical a little bit longer, going deeper with the same elements. And we just go on with the musicals for two more weeks. And the whole idea for Hashtag Jesus is, we are ready, we are on fire, and our job right now is to spread the word of God. And we want to pray for 40 days and nights that God turns earth around and people get saved. Because the worst thing what can happen, it's not that people dying because of Corona. My mom, she passed away because of Corona. But that's not a problem, she is saved. But what happens if those people, they don't know even Jesus. They will be lost for a whole eternity. And the Bible is clear there's heaven and, the, and hell in a balance and we can do a big difference. And in closing of the message, I want to ask you, do you know Christ? Is Christ the center? Sits Christ on the throne? Are you ready? If Christ comes today, you can say, hey, I'm so ready. Bring me home. Bring me home, Alabama. Bring me home. Or we're saying, oh my gosh, you're too early, Jesus. I want to marry. I want to have sex. I want to do this and this. No, we should be ready. You, you never know when he comes back. That's the word of the book of Revelation. And then after I prayed this salvation prayer for the very first time, I want to ask the Holy Spirit that He speaks to you because He spoke to the seven churches and we can hear this beautiful voice of the Holy Spirit. Let's close our eyes live and, and online and around all the locations. If you have never given your life to Jesus Christ or you are backslid and Christian or you feel right now, I need Jesus in my life. I want to make Jesus the center of my life. He should be seated on the throne then she, please pray with me. Say, dear Jesus, thank you so much for my unique life. I have failed, I have sinned. Please forgive me all my sins and failures. I make you as my Lord and Savior. Be the center of my life. I lay my life into your hands. Please lead me and guide me. Bless me and protect me. I want to be yours forever. The Bible says when you pray this prayer, you're born again, your sins are forgiven, your name is written in the book of life, you belong to the family of God, welcome home. You are a son and a daughter of the Most High God. You made him as the center of your life. And the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, spoke to the seven churches. You are the temple of God. You are the church. You are the living church of Jesus. And Holy Spirit, I want to ask you, speak to me. Is there anything I should do or I should stop? Is there anything right now? Let's have this moment live and online on all the locations where we're just quiet and we are listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. It's like a coaching moment, like this table moment where He speaks to us. Encouragement will flow, correction can flow, healing can take place. Hope and joy can take place. A lot of people when you hear 
a message about the book of Revelation, you are afraid. But God hasn't given us the spirit of fear. Fear, it's not a gift from the Holy Spirit. Fear is not a part of the kingdom of God. Of course, when there's an awakening call, it shakes us a little bit or shakes us very, very strongly. But the Holy Spirit is a hope in us. It's a source in us. It's a healing power in us that the world cannot understand. The joy in the Lord is my strength, has nothing to do with my circumstances. It's, it's a foundation, it's a source, and that source is a person. That person is Jesus Christ. If you are afraid, then ask the Holy Spirit right now, fill me with peace. Fill me with a hope. Fill me with faith that nothing is impossible with my God. Before we praise Jesus, I said to God, you are raising 144,000 people, Jewish people. God will anoint those people to preach the word of God and say, God, I want to be also one of those people. Even if I don't belong to the Jewish people, I, I, I want to be a part in the game. I want to be a part in the kingdom of God. I don't want to sit down and say, okay, cool. Hey, I said, God, anoint me. Anoint me, anoint you as a leader, as a preacher, as a teacher, as a sport, whatever you do that you are anointed with a power that you lead people to Jesus Christ.